Hi folks, I hope you're having a great time wherever you are in the world. Uh, I'm with uh, New Workforce Hawaii and we try to help people transition from where they are in life to where they want to be. And that means that the first step is to define our purpose and know why we're, uh, or what we want to accomplish in our lives. Um, we're here talking with the Blue Zone people. Uh, Scott Stenstrad is the executive director, and Shirley Andretti is uh, uh, the person that I work with most <laughs> because uh, she is uh, the community coordinator for uh, Ko'olapoko. And Ko'olapoko is the windward side of Oahu and we've been working to implement their Blue Zone project on the Windward side for a couple of years now. Um, one of the key aspects of the, their program is to help people live with purpose. And the, the program is an outgrowth of the National Geographic Association study of communities around the world where people live long and ex exceptionally long lives. Um, Scott, what, what, is the, what is the Blue Zone Project? Well, uh, Chair Bill, uh, thanks. The Blue Zones Project is really a community-based well-being initiative. Uh, and with it is, you said, to, to make the healthy choice easier so that people can live a longer life. So not just longer, but, but better as well. It's based on National Geographic fellow Dan Buettner's research uh, around those places in the world where people live to be 100 years old, up to 10 times the rate that the average American does. And here in Hawaii, the, the project has, has been brought to Hawaii by, by HMSA. Uh, so it's, it's very much a community base. We, we're not working in the entire state. We work community by community. And as you mentioned, Ko'olapoko is one of those communities that we're operating in. You OK. <laughs> um, what are some of the common elements that they've found that uh, these communities have? And so the basis of the project is, is really um, the what we refer to as the Power Nine. And when Dan and the researchers went around to the five locations uh, around the world where, where people live longer, uh, they, they, they like to say they re reversed engineered longevity by, by observing, uh, tracking, not just asking questions about what people thought, uh, allowed them to live longer, but really by making observations and looking at lifelong habits and behaviors. And from that, they distilled the, the, the power nine. Um, one of those is the uh, having a strong sense of uh, purpose uh, in all the communities. Uh, it was very interesting to them in that is they were working with translators and they would ask people like, well, what do people do when they retire? Uh, in many of these cultures, they had a hard time um, translating that because there was no concept of retirement. But what they found in, you know, in Okinawa and Sardinia, Italy and Ikarai, Greece and the Koi Peninsula and Costa Rica is that they all had words or sayings that reflected a strong sense of, of purpose. Uh, also, uh, in all these areas, they, they move naturally. Uh, they, you know, they walk places, they bike places, they, they weren't car dependent. Uh, they got up and down in, in Okinawa from a seated position on the floor you know, 30, 40 times a day. So little, uh, little things, little movements constantly. They, they grew their own vegetables in, in, garden, in their garden, so they were moving. Uh, that, uh, the gardening is, kind of leads to one of the other power nine, uh, plants a plant slant diet, so they primarily ate a vegetarian, uh, uh, you know, existed on, on vegetables, uh, fruits and vegetables that they grew themselves, uh, and they ate meat, uh, but uh, it was celebratory, you know, once or twice uh, a month. And it was a treat rather than a daily thing. Exactly, uh, exactly, and they, they also had ways in which they monitored how much they ate. You know, they ate with purpose uh, <laughs> as well. And in Okinawa, they had a phrase, harahachibu, you know, meaning to eat until you're 80% full, so that you're not, you're not overdoing it. We've all probably had that kind of uh, feeling much too often, right? You sit down, you're you stuffed eat. after Thanksgiving yeah, it's, it's dinner. It's so yeah. good, and then, you know, you, you stop when you feel full, and then five, 10 minutes later, you know, you, you're kind of overwhelmed. So 80% rule, we refer to that. Uh, 
Also, um, you know, uh, wine at five, we call it, if people have a healthy relationship with alcohol, uh, what the researchers found in these different areas is that they tended to enjoy a glass of wine or, you know, other types of alcohol with a meal with friends, but it was a glass or, or two with, uh, with a meal and friends. Uh, it wasn't the binge drinking that we see sometimes, uh, you know, here in the United States. Uh, that was... Uh a way to socialize and relieve the stress, and exactly. I guess the red wine has a uh, um, free radical. I, I don't know whether it's yeah, the, but there's a benefit to being able to drink moderately. Yeah, so there's some uh, hard benefits, particular wine, red wine, and in Sardinia, Italy, their Cannonau wines have the highest levels of resveratrol of any of the red wines in the world, so up to 10% higher. So and that's one of the active ingredients that really is contributes to that health hardy aspect of it. Um, and then, as you mentioned, you know, the, the getting rid of the day's stress, we refer to that as down, uh, downshifting. So whether it was uh, through a happy hour with, with family or friends, um, it, it could, be, uh, could be yoga, it could have been, um, you know, uh, daily prayers, uh, you know, they had some ways that they, they did that. And the one area that I didn't mention um, in, um, in California, uh, Loma Linda, California, the Seventh-day Adventist population. Part of their faith is getting out into nature, doing nature walks on a regular basis, and studies have shown that, you know, being out in nature can help monitor uh, your stress as well, so that, downshift important. Sorry. That kind of uh, uh, activity actually generates creativity. Yeah, absolutely. It frees up your mind, allows you to, uh, you know, contemplate yeah. things while, while you're in nature that you might not sitting at your, your desk or, or at home in front of the TV, that's for sure. I, I wonder how many people have experienced solving a problem in their sleep. <laughs> you're, you're stuck when you went to bed and you got the answer when you wake up. Absolutely. Giving your, your mind a chance to relax a little bit is very yeah. important. Um, some of the uh, other power nines, you know, family first, uh, you know, making time for friends and family, uh, the right tribe, who you surround yourself with, and then belonging, faith, having a connection to one's faith uh, has, uh, can add anywhere from seven to ten years to one's longevity. I think it's about the, connect, the social connectivity, uh, and it's not just being part of a faith-based organization, but actively participating uh, four times a month is what they found. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things about your program that uh, strikes me is that you don't encourage uh, big changes like going on a Mediterranean diet. You want to build small changes into people's lives. How, do, how does that work? Well, it's, it's really about trying to, you know, you think, well, when you think about it, you, you make a lot of decisions daily without thinking about it. Uh, and some uh, research have indicated, you know, hundreds of small decisions. So you find that most people can't, you can't stick with a diet. Uh, I mean, Within two, three weeks, so many, you know, the vast majority of people are, are done with the diet already. Uh, so instead of trying to tell people to go on a prescriptive diet, it's just saying eat more fruits and vegetables. So take it as, as slow and it becomes a daily habit as they can increase that. And, you know, different tips and tricks on how to eat less. Like instead of using a 10 inch plate, use an 8 inch plate uh, or 12 inch plate down to a 10 or 8 inch. So there's different little tricks, things that you can do in, in changing your environment in your home. Is that why they give you a small plate in a barbecue? <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, um, part of your program is an actual physical class in how to define your purpose. Uh, how does that work? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'll talk about that. <laughs> so um, we in Ko'olaupoko, we're um, offering free purpose workshops. It's an hour and a half to two hour experiential workshop where attendees come, they participate, um, and it's a way for them to reaffirm, in some cases rediscover, or perhaps discover for the first time what their life's purpose is. And we go through an experiential exercise using calling cards. And the formula is your gifts plus your passion plus your values equal your purpose. And through this hour and a half to two hour exercise, we've had quite a few people walk away with these, an epiphany or an aha moment. 
um, where they realize, wow, I really wanted to pursue this, and I've been doing this. And it happened to me. That's wonderful. Yeah. It's happened to quite a few people. And, you know, a lot of times people say, well, gosh, I really wish I could leave this job that I'm in, but I have a mortgage, I have a family, I need to support them. So one of the things that we connect people to is volunteer opportunities in their community because the research shows that if you can volunteer, you're going to get that same type of fulfillment. So we try to connect them with um, organizations in Ko'olaupoko that are looking for volunteers and a way for them to use their gifts and talents through volunteerism. Yeah. We tell people that volunteering is work mm -hmm. and that uh, uh, volunteering can be in a very important part of your retirement career. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, uh, I'm always amazed that people tend to drift through life without purpose. Mm -hmm. And how do you live a fulfilled life if you don't know where you want to go? Mm -hmm. Well, I do think it's a topic that um, oftentimes isn't talked about. Um, we've held these purpose workshops with high school seniors where, you know, they're at a different stage in life than, say, you or I. And so they're thinking about graduating in a month or two or, you know, what they're going to do. Are they going to stay here in Hawaii or are they going to move away? So their purpose now is going to be very different than what it is in 10, 15, 20 years. Um, and so I think sometimes people, you know, don't realize that your purpose can change. Exactly. Your purpose yeah. changes as you mature. There you go. Yeah. That's right. And I'm on, obviously on the tail end of my life, I still have things I want to accomplish. You, know, you have many and more we years, Bill. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think one of the things you touched upon, you talk about retirement, and one of the things that I found most fascinating around a sense of purpose is that the two most uh, dangerous p times in your life are the, the times with the highest mortality. Uh, one we, we don't think of, um, but it's, it's that year when you're born, that first year, but that's why so many cultures celebrate first birthdays. Mm -hmm. But the second uh, most dangerous time in one's life is the year after they retire. Mortality spikes during that time, and they believe it's because of that loss of sense of purpose. So you hit on it right uh, you know, on the head mm -hmm. when you talked about that important time of retirement. Having people that before they retired that have a good understanding of what their purpose is and how they're going to live that out, because for many people it's through their work. Mm -hmm. And now that's that's gone, you retired, that's probably much of your social circle is, is around work. We spend more than half of our, our day there. Uh, so it's, it's very critical for people that are, are going through a transition, whether it be high school to, you know, to college or to the working world or the working world mm -hmm. to a retirement phase in their yeah. life to have a good grounding in their sense of purpose. Okay. Uh, we got to take a break for the think tech people. <laughs> uh, they want to uh, let everybody know about some of the great programming they have. So we'll be back in a minute. Okay, we are back. And we've been talking about uh, some of the factors that lead to a long and better life. Mm -hmm. And uh, most specifically about purpose. 
Uh, Sherry, when's your next uh, purpose class? Mm -hmm. It's coming up on Saturday, June 10th in Kaneohe at Unity Church, which is located um, in the atrium on Kahuhipa Street. Um, I encourage folks to visit our website where we have all of our events listed, uh, info.bluezonesproject.com slash Hawaii. And um, they can see all of our upcoming events that we have. And you've expanded to the initial four communities to what now? You're, you're uh, yeah. pretty much across the state, right? Right. We, we started with, uh, with three communities. We were here on Oahu in Ko'olaupoko, as you've mentioned, and on the Big Island uh, in two-thirds of the island. That's now expanded to encompass the entire island of, of Hawaii. We just launched in Maui. Uh, in central Maui, uh, so the Wailuku Kahului area. And later this year, we'll be launching three additional communities on Oahu. Mm -hmm. uh, that will be the uh, uh, Kapolei Eva area, uh, the Wahiwa, and uh, Manoa, Makali, Makiki, Mo'ili'ili. So uh, we're really excited about bringing those additional communities. So if uh, we're not offering purpose workshops in your community yet, uh, if you live in one of those, we'll, we'll be doing that over the next, uh, the next year. Mm -hmm. Uh, Sherry, I understand that uh, we've been working at this for a couple of years now, and you have very specific goals that you track. That's right. How, how, uh, we've been pretty successful with uh, a lot of people, but one of the problems has been with the individual. Mm -hmm. And how do you reach people and help them make these small changes? It's a great question. So we, what I like to do is say we work in three pillars. That's how Blue Zones Project operates. So we have the people pillar, which is the engagement. And we do that by offering these free activities in the community. So the purpose workshop, as we spoke about, uh, cooking demonstrations. Um, gardening demonstrations. We launch walking moai groups or hui's of people in each of our communities. Um, and we offer engagement presentations. We also do a lot of outreach tables and partnering with organizations to share what Blue Zones Project is all about. So that's the people pillar. We also work in the places a pillar, that's where you or I spend a lot of our time, living, working, playing, if you will. So grocery stores, work sites, uh, faith-based organizations, schools, um, and restaurants. So we work in all of those sectors where people visit on a pretty regular basis. In fact, the research shows that we spend about 90% of our time within a 10 mile radius. And so with Blue Zones Project, that's what we're looking to do is impact the community in which we live. Ko'olau Poco, a lot of people don't know what Ko'olau Poco is, but it, um, it basically means we're working in Waimanalo, Kailua, Kaneohe, and Kahalu'u to help make the healthy choice the easy choice. And we do this through policy changes, which brings me to our third pillar. Policy encompasses the built environment, making our streets, our sidewalks more pedestrian, bike friendly. Things um, like complete streets. Things like complete street initiatives, exactly. The, and, and then and food the policy and tobacco. Is to have not just cars, but uh, provisions for bikes and wheelchairs and people. Exactly, and to help make our streets safer for all users, not just for cars. Talk a little bit about the Moai and, and how that works, because that's a support group that uh, in Okinawa is established when you're a child and is uh, continues throughout your life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in Okinawa, it's fantastic. They form these moai shortly after the birth of their children, and these moai stay together throughout their lifetime. In fact, one of my favorite slides that we use in our presentation is a picture of these women that have been in a moai for 97 years. Oh, wow. And their average age is 101 and a half years old. It's incredible. And so we're looking to adopt that same principle, that same concept here in Ko'olaupoko by forming walking moais. So we'll come into your community. We invite your neighborhood, your school, your church, whatnot to come together. 
And um, typically, it's a way of expanding your personal board of directors. So we bring five to eight people together who don't know each other, and they walk together for 10 weeks. The group decides when, where, and for how long they're going to walk. We help them to track that. It's usually the time spent together. And then we meet with them at a midway point, so five weeks in. And then at 10 weeks, we have a celebratory event. And I'll tell you, it's fantastic. Many of these Moais that we launched over the last year and a half are now on week 30 or wow. more because they've built these friendships and they just continue. Some of them have gone on to be leaders of new Moais. It really is fantastic. It, that's, that's great. Um, <laughs> uh, getting stuck here. Uh, speaking of getting stuck, when you feel stuck in life, your purpose is your guide. And uh, sometimes you can talk to the boss and figure out how you can uh, continue to grow within your business. Uh, sometimes you have to look at volunteer opportunities and uh, so uh, what do, what in your program helps people move uh, from a situation that may not be as good as they like to a more fulfilled life? Well, it's really looking at the, the whole individual. And we, we talk about uh, Blue Zones Project as being focused on well-being. Uh, that's not just physical well-being. That's, that's you know, your, your sense of uh, community. Um, and, and do you have that, that group of, of close friends that you're, you're uh, interacting with and, and you can go to and you can talk to? Uh, is the, the physical community that you live in, how connected are you to that? And do you feel that that's the best place for you to be? Obviously, the more you know about your community, the more interactions you have and maybe are volunteering in the community, you're going to feel a lot you know, uh, more pride and more connected to that community. That has a, an impact on your, your health uh, as well. Uh, so it's, it's looking at the different aspects. It's not just, oh, the exercise, you know, the move naturally, get out and walk more. Uh, it's not just the food and, and trying to eat a more plant-based diet. It's all those things coming together, that finding that sense of purpose, uh, that's where you really hit the, the sweet spot. And we've had some amazing transformations of, of individuals, both here and, and on the Big Island. Uh, you know, and the, the easiest thing sometimes to, that people can relate to are things like weight loss. Uh, well, I, you know, I just heard this week about yesterday, in fact, on the, on the Big Island, of somebody that got involved with our project uh, you know, in the last year and has lost over 100 pounds. Wow, uh, you know, that's by, awesome. but and wow. it's not just about the weight for them. It was about the social connectiveness and just their physical ability to be connected with other uh, other people. Um, you know, and and it's so that's really what becomes kind of the empowering part are all those things working together, uh, not just any one of them. And that involves um, uh, habits, your daily things mm -hmm. that happen almost automatically. Yeah. So we talked about the right tribe earlier and, and Shri about getting people together, walking together. Well, they're reinforcing one another's positive behaviors. We also have potluck moais where we encourage people to get together and eat together a plant-based um, you know, meal where people are bringing in different recipes that they can yeah. try. So that you're, you're building that, that, more, that support group within your, your life that you may not have. And then people try to bring family members involved and just, it just starts spreading throughout the community. And that support group is so important because I'm thinking of my kids and they could have grown up in a gang or they actually participated in drama and, mm -hmm. and had positive friends who were good students and it made all the difference in the world. Yeah, when they talk about the, you know, in the right tribe and, and who your friends are, are, are so important. Our parents told us that, right, when we were growing up. 
But you know, they've done studies to show that, that ba other bad behaviors travel just like a, a cold might amongst friends uh, or amongst family members. So if your three closest friends are, are smokers, you're exponentially like 150% more likely to be a smoker or become a smoker. So it's just like other programs out there where if you're going to change behavior, you've got to surround yourself with people that are going to support that behavior. And the folks that have made the major transformations, uh, you know, that's what they've that's what they've done through their yeah. Moais, through the purpose, through volunteering. So it's not just that you know, okay, I'm eating better, but I'm supporting. I'm surrounding myself with people that support these positive changes I'm trying to make in my life, and sometimes that means you know having to step away from uh, you know from other folks or try to get them to join you, which is even better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the um, we talked about why, and in the Hawaiian tradition, it's uh, our huis, mm -hmm. and uh, surrounding yourself with people who have accomplish what you want to accomplish mm -hmm. can be very powerful. Um, in today's world, anyone who uh, expects to get a good job and uh, work at that company for the rest of their lives are probably into a disappointment because uh, we're transitioning into what might be called a gig economy, uh, and you folks are an example of that because you're hired to do a job. And Koapoko Project, for instance, will be Powell in a year and a half, and we'll see. <laughs> then you may be transferred to another project within Blue Zone, or you may be looking for another job. That's, That's right. what so many of us face. Mm -hmm. So, uh, we'll be hired to do a specific job, and the solution is that we, we have to uh, act and manage our careers like a business. And uh, we need to know where we want to go, and we need to it's not so much who we know, but who knows us and our uh, expertise, and that involves marketing. And so we have to be ready to uh, deal with the uh, contingencies that mm -hmm. face our life. And I'm very much into helping people live a more resilient life. That means their uh, personal lives in being prepared for losing a job or the next hurricane. Uh, it's a financial uh, resilience because if you've got multiple uh, streams of income, uh, you can survive losing a job mm -hmm. uh, and uh, deal with an emergency. Uh, and. Uh, we work uh, to help our community be more resilient in planning for a disaster. So uh, be ready for the next hurricane. Uh, in the future, there's going to be many ways to create an income. Uh, your employer is going to be looking for people who are uh, very uh, adaptable, who can solve problems, who can work with people, uh, and who are expert in their field. So it's a matter of lifetime learning. And uh, uh, so you need to be the best you can in your particular field of endeavor. Um, we'll be back in a couple of weeks. And uh, thank you for your time and listening. Thank you, Bill. Thank you, Bill.